first impressions. A first impression can make or break a person. Within the first few seconds of getting to know someone, we've already established a sense of who they are, where they've been, how they act, and quite frankly, if we're gonna like that person or not. Why is that? Why is it that we allow ourselves to make generalizations based on appearance alone? What if we met everyone like this, not being able to see them? How different would your first impression be then? On The Voice, the judges turn their chairs around so they don't see the person. They don't allow their appearance to affect their judgment of how they think they can sing. All they can do is listen. What if all we did was listen to what someone had to say instead of judging them based on how they look? How differently would you perceive that person? How differently would you perceive me? Hi. If I asked you where you think I'd be in five years, what would you say? I'm 17, so by the age of 22. Now, if I asked you this question about a minute ago when you still couldn't see me, would your answer have been any different? Why is that? It's because you've allowed a stereotype to decide my future. Now, hopefully, some of you would have said a college graduate, but I'm pretty sure none of you would have guessed a college graduate with her degree in engineering. Why is that? It's because it's not what the stereotypical girl, let alone black girl, would do. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, the black girl talking about stereotypes. She's just going to bash white people for 10 minutes. Well, sorry to bust your little bubble, but that's not what I'm going to do. I actually like white people. And I like black people. I like all kinds of people, because to me, it doesn't matter what you look like or where you came from. It matters what you have to say. But the kind of people I don't like are closed-minded people. It's because those are the kind of people who allow stereotypes to define another person. And that's why it's so important that we break the stereotype. Now, before we get into breaking the stereotype, we must first know what one is. So if you were to Google stereotype definition, this is what would pop up. A widely held but fixed and oversimplified image or idea of a particular type of person or thing. Or a relief printing plate cast in a mold made from composed type or an original plate. An oversimplified image and a mold is how Oxford Dictionary defines the stereotype. But how would actual human beings define it? Let's find out. What is a stereotype? A stereotype is sort of a caricature, the original standard version of something, I suppose. A stereotype is a commonly believed image or idea of a particular person or thing. Stereotype is the way a certain people perceive other people. A stereotype is a preconceived notion about a group of people, and most of the time it's homophobic, sexist, or racist. So how would you define a stereotype? But now that we know what one is, we have to talk about the different types of stereotypes, because there are many different types. So, the first kind are racial stereotypes, like all black people are dumb, or all white people have no rhythm, all British people have bad teeth, all Africans live in the jungle, and all Asians are smart. That kind of stereotype. And then we have gender stereotypes, like all women like the color pink, all men are stronger than women, all women talk too much, all a woman is supposed to do is stay at home and take care of the kids, and cook and clean, while the man goes out and does the work. All men are smarter than women, which is just not true. And then we have stereotypes based on social group, like all jocks are dumb, all geeks play video games, all band kids are weird, all goths wear black, and all thespians are overly dramatic. Ugh, but I have no idea where they got that one from. But that's the question, isn't it? Where do they come from? It's not like somebody decided to make this saying about someone and spread it around. They come from a different, they come from different kinds of things. One being TV and movies. Television, movies, and most commercials always seem to portray a certain type of person a certain type of way. They use stereotypes for the consumer to easily identify and categorize so they can push their idea or sell their product more easily. 
Another place is social media. Social media is a very powerful tool in today's society because that's all we're ever on. Nobody ever watches the news anymore because you get it from either Twitter or Facebook. They used to say, you can't believe everything you see on TV, but now it's, you can't believe everything you read on social media. A couple months ago, I was on Twitter and I was scrolling through the tweets and I happened to come across a certain individual who decided they would tend to express their opinions on the African-American community. They said things like, all black people are savages and they're uncivilized and don't know how to behave themselves. So, me being the helpful human being I am, decided to take it upon myself and help this man see how wrong his opinion was. So, throughout the discussion, he actually admitted that he'd never actually seen or met a black person in his life because of the country he lived in and that he developed his opinion based on things he read on social media and saw on TV, which is a prime example of how much of an impact social media can play on how a person perceives the world or other people. Another source is history. Now, there is always some truth to every stereotype. Most of the stereotypes surrounding black people are that they are uneducated and they're, that, that they're inferior to the white race. And these came from the 300 years that this race was enslaved. Slaves weren't allowed to get an education. They weren't allowed to read or write or do anything. And if they were caught doing anything of that matter, they were severely punished, if not put to death. Now, they were always perceived as inferior to the white race, along with gender stereotypes. Back then, all a woman could do was stay at home and cook and clean. They didn't have any rights. It wasn't until the 1920s when women got the right to vote. So yes, that stereotypes have some truth, but they're different truths because they were true back then, but the circumstances are different now because they can't be applied now like they were back then. And this wouldn't be so hard to understand if it weren't for the lack of education. In history, we learned that black people, they're either slaves or they're activists of the civil rights movement. That's all we know. We don't learn about the hundreds of successful African-Americans in history. We never learned that it was a black man, Louis Latimer, who invented the filament. All we know is that Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. Why is that? Why is it that we never learn about everything? We only see history through a one-sided scope that society wants us to see. Now, how do they affect society? Well, how do they affect me? My entire life I've been stereotyped. I've been profiled, I've been all of the nine yards. From the age of five, I was accused of stealing toys from my kindergarten class that my father had actually bought for me, but the teachers thought, oh, these are my toys and you stole them. Only to find out that a week later that they were actually mine, so she sent them home in an envelope without even telling me face to face because she wouldn't let go of her pride, saying that she stereotyped an African-American five-year-old. The following year, I was accused of stealing Swedish fish from my first grade class. No matter how many times I told the teacher that I didn't do it, she didn't believe me. Why is that? Because, oh, she's black, of course she had to steal. Even when I got to high school or middle school, my shop classes, I was always treated as incompetent because I was a female and I can't do what men can do, apparently. Throughout my life, all of these things have happened to me. But how do they affect society around me? Well, the people who are actually doing the stereotyping it doesn't allow them to get to know a person for who they really are. They meet someone, oh, this person's this, so this is a stereotype. They put up a wall with the label that they never have to go around because that's all they need to know about the person. And the person being stereotyped, it doesn't allow them to live out their full potential. All they're told is what they are, how they should be, and how they should act. They can never rise above what society says they are. Now, how do we break them? Well, for the people doing the stereotyping, three steps. De deconstruct, discuss, and educate. Deconstruct, take away the validity of the stereotype. Acknowledge that it's not real or true in most cases. Discuss, talk about how it actually affects other people and how wrong they are, and educate. Provide them with the alternative to the stereotypes. See the whole picture, learn the whole truth. Look beyond the stereotypes. And for the people being stereotyped, three words, prove them wrong. Prove them wrong. Not them just being that the white people or the men, them whoever says that you can't do something. 
all of them saying that you can't do something, that you can never amount to anything, that all you can do is be a stereotype. Because most of the times, it's not just the men or the other white people. It's the people who look just like you, the female saying that, oh, you're a female, you can't do this. Or the other black people saying, oh, you're black, you can't do this. So prove them wrong. There is no greater satisfaction than proving them wrong. I do it every day of my life. So to everyone, be a game changer and break the stereotype. Thank you.